Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Welcome to my video on performing an ANOVA with a Games Howell post hoc test in SPSS. In counseling research, when using ANOVA, it's important we consider the characteristics of the data as we select a post hoc test when making multiple comparisons between levels of the independent variable. So taking a look at these fictitious data I have loaded in the data view in SPSS, you can see I have one independent variable here, treatment, it has three levels, CBT, existential, and waiting list. And I have a variable named depression, which is a dependent variable, measures the scale level of measurement, as it's referred to in SPSS, which means the variable is either interval or ratio. And we'll assume this is a, these are scores from a depression inventory where a higher score represents more severity of depressive symptoms. Before actually performing the ANOVA, we want to consider the assumptions and test for them. For ANOVA, we need at least one categorical variable with two or more levels. And in this case, we have one independent variable that is categorical that has three levels. We need one dependent variable, measure at the continuous level, and we have that here in the variable depression. We assume independence of observations, so the observations do need to be independent of one another. And we also have to make sure that we do not have outliers, that the dependent variable is normally distributed, and that we have homogeneity of variance. The advantages of the game's Howell post hoc test is that it can manage unequal sample sizes. So when the observations for each group are not equal. And we have that in this case. We can see we have a total of 45 records. And we can see that the first 20 are CBT. So we have unequal sample sizes. The games Howell test can also be used when we violate the assumption of homogeneity variance. And we'll test that as part of the ANOVA procedure in SPSS. So first I'm going to test for outliers and normality of the dependent variable. I'm going to go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, then Explore. I'm going to move Depression to the Dependent List list box here on the right. And under Plots, I'm going to uncheck stem and leaf, check off histogram, and check off normality plots with tests. Then I'll go ahead and click continue and then OK. And we can see here that for the Shapiro-Wilk test of normality, we have a 0.391 p-value. That is not statistically significant, so we would assume that we do have a normally distributed dependent variable. And then moving down to the box plot at the end of the output, we have no values listed here below the bottom whisker or above the top whisker. So we're going to assume that we do not have any outliers in the dependent variable depression. Then moving back to the data view, I'm going to go to Analyze, General Linear Model, and Univariate. And for the dependent variable, we know that's going to be depression, so I'll move that uh, variable into the dependent variable list box. And then treatment will be our independent variable, which is referred to here as a fixed factor. So I'll move that to the fixed factor list box. Under plots, I'm going to move treatment to the horizontal axis and then add it to the plots here at the bottom and click continue. Under post hoc, I'm going to move the independent variable treatment over to the list box post hoc test 4. And you can see here we have a number of post hoc tests for equal variances assumed and then a few for equal variances not assumed. Now when a data set is first analyzed, we would not know if we have equal variances or not until we run the ANOVA. So we're going to want to select an appropriate post hoc test for both equal variances assumed and not assumed 
but only interpret the one that is appropriate based on the results of the Levine's test. So we know we have unequal sample sizes. So for equal variances assumed, I'm going to check off the Sheffe test. And for equal variances not assumed, I'm going to select Games Howell. Then I'm going to click Continue. Under Options, I'm going to display the means for treatment. But I'm not going to worry about main effects here because I am doing uh, the post hoc test. I'm conducting two of them. Of course, I'll only be interpreting one. And then I am going to check off descriptive statistics, estimates of effect size, and homogeneity test. Click Continue. Now this dialog is configured to run the ANOVA, so I'll click OK. And we can see under Between Subjects Factors here at the top, uh, we have 20 cases for CBT, 14 for existential, and 11 for the waiting list. And if we take a look at the descriptive statistics, we can see that the means for CBT and existential are fairly close to one another. The waiting list is a bit higher. And also notice here the standard deviations are quite different. About 5 for CBT, 9.6 for existential, and 3.7 for the waiting list. And as you can see for the Levine's test, which tests homogeneity of variance, we do have a statistically significant finding here, 0 0.001. So we would assume we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance. Looking at the test of between subjects effects, the next table here, we're going to be most interested in treatment. And we can see that the p-value is 0 0.03. That is statistically significant if the alpha is set at 0 0.05. And the partial eta squared here, 0.154, which we interpret as 15.4%, meaning the treatment explains 15.4% of the variance in the dependent variable depression. Then I'm going to move down to the post hoc tests. And we know that in this case, because we have violated the assumption of homogeneity of variance, that we will be interpreting the games Howell post hoc test and not the Sheffe. But notice how both of the tests are listed in the same table. So we can see if we look at CBT as compared to existential, the p-value is 0.945. It's not statistically significant. So we're going to assume there's no difference between the CBT and existential groups. Looking at CBT and waiting list, the finding is statistically significant, 0 0.001. So we would say there is a statistically significant difference between CBT and the waiting list groups as measured on the dependent variable depression. And then the last comparison would be between existential and waiting list. And we can see here we have a non-statistically significant difference. And then we'll look at the line graph that compares the three levels of the independent variable in this case, which is uh, CBT, which are CBT, existential, and waiting list. And you can see that the CBT and existential scores are fairly close together. The means are fairly close together, and the waiting list is a bit higher. And this is consistent with our results from the games Howell test. I hope you found this video on conducting an ANOVA with a Games Howell post hoc test in SPSS to be useful. As always, if you have any questions or concerns, feel free to contact me and I'll be happy to assist you.